Hey everybody, it's me, DioGenZ. Welcome back to my Coliseum walkthrough, 100%. We start off this episode with a battle with some of our ex-employees, apparently. We learned a little bit more about our shady past, and now know that snagging Pokemon is our thing. Makes me wonder, where did we get these two evolutions? I'd like to believe that they've been our lifelong pal for as long as we've known them, but chances have it, I probably snagged them from some poor sap who was unsuspecting. Oh well, the snag machine you'll come to see is very super effective, but only on certain Pokemon. Now what is of this 100% walkthrough is getting all the possible Pokemon in the game. And that last one is going to be very difficult to obtain. Just because it is battles upon battles upon battles. Not entirely sure how I'll do the format of that. Might just fast forward it, put it to music, and talk over it. This way, it can go swifter. To the end goal. Yeah, so there. I'm gonna keep this snag machine myself. No, I'm not good enough! No, you're not. If you were, your hideout probably wouldn't have been explodified. Process that one, snaggy poo. Blast you, Dio Gen Z. We're gonna get that snag machine. Mark my words. Well, what do you know, Dio Gen Z? So you're a Team Snagum member. All right. To be accurate, I should say former Snagum member. It's okay, Dio Gen Z. It doesn't matter. After all, you're my gallant prince who rescued me when I was in trouble. So it doesn't matter. Besides, I thought up something after listening to those creeps. Listen, Dio Gen Z. We should go shopping for some Pokeballs. Did you not pay attention last time we walked into the shop? Look, I'm gonna do this again so you can plainly see. There's nothing in this shop. Actually, there is some to be had at the train station saloon that we started out at. But of course, the way the game events are set out, we do absolutely have to check out the Pokemon shop first. Even though the doors are still open because we were there just five minutes ago. I know it was an episode since you've seen it, but we were here. It's not that long ago, see? No Pokeballs at this counter. Alright, uh, now I'm guessing none of the customers have it. Would you get out of my way? You can start to see why this uh, girl here wanes on you in interest. Just because she's very insistent on going to somewhere that doesn't have what we need for success. Wait, you. You have papers in front of you. You look like what you're doing is knowledgeable. And the knowledge he gives us is that the outskirts where we were headed has Pokeballs available. So, Chi, if you would just let me be me and do what we be do, we could have been through with that shopping experience. I think she just wanted to go back and see if we would buy her something. She thought, oh, I'm going to get on his good side, compliment him a little bit. Maybe if we go to the shop, then he'll buy me uh, some X-Guard or something. I don't know. This way, if he gets uh, abducted by those Snagum members, because it looks like I've got an enemy list myself, I'll have the X-Guard to save me. I don't know. Anyway. Pokeballs. Yes. Those things around here? Not many people ask for them. They're a little dusty, in fact, because they haven't been used in so long. <laughs> I can't tell if everybody in this restaurant is looking at us or staring blankly at the news. It could go either way. What is that guy doing? He's getting Pokeballs. What's that thing on his arm? Ooh, look at that. They even have a Great Ball available. Wow, why would you go for a Pokeball when you could get a Great Ball? I guess because it's a lesser price, but the way I like to do things in this game is go for the absolute first possible chance to capture the Pokemon that we need to get. Now, I know I've been very vague and blank in saying what Pokemon we're going to capture, but do stay tuned! Soon y'all shall see. You shall see what we'll be capturing in these Pokeballs. Oh, it's you two. Something's terrible is happening. A whole lot of scary men came here. I think I even saw those two creeps who took off in the truck earlier. Oh, boy. That's never a good sign. When creeps come back, 
We will go in houses and take our leisurely time. Hehehe. <laughs> no, I, I want to check these houses because if I do recall, some people gave you good items in here. But the problem is, it's been so long since I've played this game. Although the houses are all decorated very nicely. Cool detail with the fan over the oven. The mini TV. Flat screen before there was even that many flat screens because this was GameCube generation. I played this on a tube TV back in the day. Oh, how technology changes. But at this point, I don't remember which house does what, so I'll go research it. I want to see what these shady men are doing here. Master Mira B, it's him, it's him. He's the one that took the girl from us. Oh, now, aren't you boys frightfully pathetic? You mean to tell me you were bursted by these darling infants? Darling, did you say your name was Dio Gen Z or something? I so don't like saying this, but we're not at liberty to keep your lady friend at liberty. Well, it's a good thing she's not Lady Liberty, isn't it? That sweet young thing, she can see things that ordinary people aren't supposed to see. That just will not do for what we're planning to do. No, it just won't do at all. If you don't like pain like most people, you can avoid the pain by keeping your nose out of places it needn't be. Boys, oh boys! Yes, yes we will! Boys, I should make my return to Pi right now. Do remember that I will be waiting for you to return with the lady. Am I make myself clear? I won't accept failure from you again. Let the music spin. Let's get it on. And so the first freak of this shady duo emerges. The boss of these two apparently is Mirror B. What a funky fool. And what does he, she mean by Chi can see things other people can't? What, is she a ghost hunter? You don't want her looking for specters and spooks in this oasis town? And where is this place Pyrite? All things, all things we will find out, people, soon. But seriously, one thing I can't figure out without your commenting help, is Mira B a boy or a girl? I cannot tell the gender of that thing. Especially with that kind of voice. I mean, the clothes, that's one thing, but then the voice, it's like, wow, I, I just don't know. I really don't. And when are these guys going to learn, Wismers will not do? Okay, you got a low tad. The 3D rendition looks nice, I will say that. That's one of the things I will compliment time and time again on this game, and why I say, even if you missed out on this game, go back. Go back if you've got a Wii, or if you can get a Wii at this point, since Wii U is almost out, for a cheap price. Go back and play this GameCube classic. It's one of the best on the console. So it's one for every Pokemaniac to play, and there's no need to worry about any of the GBA generation games. It's not required to play this. That was another high point in selling point to this game was unlike Stadium, where you needed a cartridge to transfer Pokemon back and forth, otherwise you'd be using rentals, you start out with your very own team of Evolution Awesome. No, they will never change. You'll never get a chance where you'll have Vaporeon and Flareon or any other combination of the Evolutions. But Umbreon and Espeon? Pretty badass in my book. Umbreon's personally my favorite of Evolution, so just having him makes this team complete. My turn now. I'm not gonna get end up like Foley. We'll see, Trudely. And not only do these people have strange hairdos. Pokeball afro. Sort of ponytail, rubber band, horn thing. For that dude's hair. But Trudely? Got some strange names as well. Also, take note of the poke physics of the battlefield. As soon as we entered battle in... The mayor's office, it expanded, and all the furniture left. And now the Pokemon leave too. Ah, the cinematic death animations. Those are very humorous too. One of my favorites in particular is Vileplume. And I do hope we get to battle it soon. What's that? It's one 
Oh, those strange Pokemon, the peculiar ones. It's got a black aura coming from it. <gasps> and it has no problems attacking people. I hate to say this, there's no other choice. But we need to get that Pokemon back. And I am the one who can do it. That's right, people. Keep in mind my sidebar. That device on my hand is not a clever sleeve that looks cool. It's our Snagum device that changes normal Pokeballs, which we just picked up on the outskirts, into Snag Balls. And this is all the Pokemon we will be collecting in this game, the 100%ing that I'm talking about, capturing and purifying all of these Shadow Pokemon, if it's possible. I don't even know if it is. I don't even know really what a Shadow Pokemon can do besides attack people. What's different about its stats? What's different about its attacks? Well, I'm sure we'll learn a lot more if we can get our Pokeball around that one. Ugh. Rough time for Umbreon. What's cool about this game, not only do you start out with some unorthodox starters, not the regular elemental trio of fire, grass, or water, but your opponents, they too, have very differing Pokémon that are not at a weak level. Level 30? No! That was a hilarious death animation, but I didn't want to see that. Ah, but level 30 is not good enough to take a critical hit. That's a jib! Okay, well, uh, yeah, your Pokemon, they were defeated, accidentally by that matter. Uh, well, this is not a great start to my 100% walkthrough. Huh. Damn it, I didn't save! Ah, screw it, you know what? The good thing about these two is, even though they'll run away for now, I can tell you with some of my foresight of playing this game before, we will be able to verse them again. So never fear, if you accidentally defeat the Makuhita like I do, and uh, <laughs> you kind of don't want to do that, it's uh, a very great ally to your team, then you can actually battle him again. So no fault there, we will get the 100%. And if you noticed, that colorful trio that was hanging out with Mirror B is now guarding the gates. Any exit point out of this oasis is going to be guarded by either Rozo, Verde, or Blue Dude. I, I don't remember what he was called, but Blue Dude. And what their costumes are supposed to signify to you, if you're going after the 100% Shadow Run like I am, is which Shadow Pokemon these guys have a hold to. That's right, they have evolved starters from the second generation. Keep in mind, this is GameCube, so the farthest that it's ever seen at this point is 3rd gen Pokemon. There's no 4th gen, but seeing how Johto is my favorite region, this makes me happy. And there goes Grimer. So let's be a bit more delicate this time in attacking Quillava. If you could already guess, Bayleaf is contained by Verde, and the blue dude who I forgot his name has Croconaw. So you can get a chance to grasp these early in the game. I know you don't start with a starter, but you have an option to choose one in a strange way. One that's already been trained by another trainer. That's what was really novel about this game. Not only in the second gen did you have the experience of meeting a trainer that stole a Pokemon from Professor Elm, and you could relive that goodness in our crystal walkthrough, but then you moved on to the third gen, where now you're doing the thieving. Now you get to play the role of almost a Team Rocket member, or Team Magma, Aqua, Plasma, whatever member you want to say that's stealing Pokemon, but you're an anti-hero. You're only stealing the stolen Pokemon that have been turned to shadows. Those that are pure are left alone. But what if this guy Rojo here, or Rozo, whatever his name is, Rojo, it's just the red for Spanish, what if he raised this Quilava here from Cyndaquil and he decided willingly to turn it into a shadow Pokemon because us and our noobishness and of defeating the only shadow Pokemon we've seen besides this one, how could we know the powers it possesses? 
Well, maybe he does, and he wanted his Quillava to be that way, so... In a strange sense, we are still the bad guys here. But I'm gonna assume the latter. I'm gonna assume that Rozo is eccentric, just like his boss Mirror B, and they are a gang of polka thieves. How so many people with Pokemon ended up in an area with no Pokemon is beyond me, though. I would love to hear how people migrated out this way. What was that strange Pokemon? What did you people do to it? That? It's a Pokemon that we turned into a fighting machine by artificially closing its heart. No, you didn't. You artificially closed the door to that poor Pokemon's heart? <laughs> Knowing that's not going to help you do anything. And he goes off before we could interrogate him further. Damn it! I know when I was little, I heard about that. They say if any Pokemon closes the door to its heart, it can gradually be reopened. Dio Gen Z, let's go. The guys are probably headed for Py Pyrite Town. After all, Pyrite was where Mirror B said he'd be going. And you are correct, Chi. But before we do, let's take one more crack at talking to the locals to see what items they could give us. Anything? No? Okay. They give us information. Telling us more information that I already kind of would have speculated on. If we are getting within five minutes into the game and we are thieves surrounded in a band of thieves from different factions of thieves, uh, I'm pretty sure any town we go to is going to have shady people. Obvious statement there, lady, but uh, thanks for the tip. I would have preferred an item. Uh, but still, you know, that's what makes this game fun. You, you never know what you're going to get when you talk to people. Sometimes it'll be a Pokemon battle like here which I wanted to get into, even though it's not for a shadow Pokemon. One, because we need experience, and two, because this background scenery is luscious, gorgeous, much better than the mayor's office. I love Phoenix City. It's certainly an oasis town. And I gotta say, the GameCube was pretty good at bringing the paradise-like experiences, whether it was Super Mario Sunshine, Isle Delfino and all those vacation spots, or come stay at the Thugland of Phoenix City. Oh yeah, we have our water filtrated so it shines and sparkles, but we have thugs that may be snagging and stealing. So beware, but have a drink in Phoenix City Oasis. I sure wish we could talk to this trainer afterwards and ask him where did he find his Pokemon. I feel like there must be Pokemon somewhere. You're telling me there's no Cacnea anywhere out in the desert outside of this wasteland? Huh. I don't know. I don't know, but I would guess so. Have to be getting him from somewhere. Unless the roller skate dude is in with the evil thugs. Who knows? It's all confusing. Are we evil? Are we good? Is Mirror B a boy or a girl? I just don't know. There are lots of questions, many answers needing to be obtained. But Wurmple looks so cute, making his minimal efforts to attack Umbreon. What I love about Umbreon is that it's great in bulk. It can take a lot of wallops from its opponents, so long as those opponents are not fighting types. And for that matter, if Wurmple knew a sufficient bug-type move, then maybe I'd be in trouble. Dark types are weak to fighting in bug, and that's something to be aware of. Uh, yeah, I figured that wasn't supposed to happen. But maybe next time you'll get better roller skates. This way you could stick on the battlefield, and not on your ass. Yeah. I, I don't know much about Team Snagum, but we will find out more in the next episode.